Hello and welcome to Doc Play's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at intermolecular forces, the types and relative strength of them. So by the end of this lesson you should be able to do the following. You should be able to recall the three types of intermolecular forces and explain the relative boiling points of molecules based on their intermolecular forces. Firstly then, intermolecular forces, what are they and where do they occur? Well, let's look at the two types of bonds that we get. We have chemical bonds, and these occur between atoms, and we've seen examples of these like metallic, covalent, and ionic. But importantly, intermolecular forces are a type of physical bond, and they occur between molecules. And that means that they tend to be between covalent molecules. Here we have an example of water, H2O, and we can see two different types of bonds. The first here is a covalent bond, and that's a strong bond, and that is shown here as the blue lines in the atoms and in the space fill model, they're also as blue lines, we can see them here. Those bonds are very close to each other, they occur between the atoms. The intermolecular force, on the other hand, is displayed between the molecules here and is described in red as a dashed line between these oxygen and hydrogens. And there we are describing a weak interaction. There is no exchange or sharing of electrons in this bond. There are three types of intermolecular force and we're going to go and have a look at each of those. In the AQA specification, we're going to look at three types of intermolecular forces, and those three types are going to be van der Waals forces of attraction, permanent dipole, permanent dipole, sometimes simplified just to dipole, dipole, and H bonding or hydrogen bonding. They're drawn here in order, and as we go down, the strength of the intermolecular force increases. What this ultimately means is that substances which have van der Waals forces of attraction only will tend to have lower boiling points, and those with permanent dipole, permanent dipole, and hydrogen bonding tend to have higher boiling points than molecules of a similar size. We're going to look at each of these now in turn to see if we can identify what sort of molecules have each of the types of intermolecular forces. We'll start here then with the weakest intermolecular force, that is the van der Waals. And we'll look at this example here where we've got argon. Now, argon is a single molecule. It's in the group 8 or noble gases, and there's no dipole in the molecule, or no permanent dipole. But electrons are always moving within that molecule, and at any given moment, there may be more electrons on one side of the atom than on the other. What that results in is that there would be an increase in charge density, or more electrons on one side, resulting in a slightly delta negative part of the atom, whereas on the other side we might have a slightly delta positive. This in turn sets a dipole in the molecule, and because it's not permanent, we describe this as a temporary or an induced dipole. In turn, then, this temporary dipole induces a second dipole on its near neighbour, and the result is a weak interaction between the atoms or molecules called the van der Waals interaction. Importantly, the van der Waals interaction is affected by a couple of things. Firstly, then, the more electrons, or the larger the molecule, the stronger the van der Waals. So if you go down a group, for example, helium, neon, argon, krypton, and xenon, as you go down, the van der Waals forces of attraction will increase, and therefore they will have a higher boiling point as you go down. Also, in organic chemistry, the straighter the molecule, the closer the molecules can be together, and that means the van der Waals forces of attraction will also be stronger. What the results is, if you've got increased branching in a molecule, the molecule will have a lower boiling point. 
The next example of intermolecular forces, then, are the permanent dipole, permanent dipole forces, or sometimes called dipole dipole. If we look at our example here, we've got hydrogen chloride. Now, chlorine is more electronegative than the hydrogen atom, and therefore pulls electron density towards it. Therefore, as a result of this, there is a dipole set up in the molecule. As a result, there is more electron density on the chlorine, and we denote this with a delta negative sign, and the hydrogen a delta positive sign. We represent this dipole then with an arrow, which we draw from the positive towards the negative sign, and that shows the direction of our dipole. Because we have this permanent dipole, that will align itself with the other dipoles within the molecule, and we end up with an interaction between these molecules. The interaction between the two dipoles in the molecules, which we can see here with our dashed line, is what we call the permanent dipole, permanent dipole, or dipole dipole intermolecular force. Importantly, this is stronger than the van der Waals force of attraction that we saw before. So, an important question to ask is which molecules have permanent dipoles? Well, some molecules are polar if they contain polar bonds. An example here then is of HCl. There's a difference in electronegativity and so our HCl molecule is polar and we have a permanent dipole from the delta positive hydrogen towards the delta negative chloride or chlorine atom. So a molecule will be polar if they have a net dipole moment and that means we've got a dipole with the hydrogen chloride going in one direction only. It's a bit like balancing forces in the physics. A non-polar molecule then uh, can have dipoles and the dipoles in the bonds within the molecule cancel each other out. An example here would of a non-polar molecule would be tetrachloromethane, which is our middle example here, where we've got four dipoles within the molecule, but they end up cancelling each other out because they work in equal and opposite directions. So this molecule here has no net dipole. Our final example then with water, which is a bit of a unique substance anyway, at the end we have two dipoles and they are both working in a similar direction and overall we have a dipole that goes from the delta positive hydrogens towards the delta negative oxygen. So overall we have a dipole from the left to the right. Finally, then, we're going to look at hydrogen bonding. And we'll start this discussion by looking at the boiling point of the hydrides. If we look at the group four hydrides, their relative boiling points are up here. This makes sense that they generally increase because we've got larger molecules and greater intermolecular forces due to van der Waals. Now, if we come to the boiling point of the group five, six, and seven hydrides, they seem to follow a similar trend except for the hydrides of oxygen, which is water, the hydrides of hydrogen fluoride, which is HF, and the hydride of ammonia, NH3 here. These are all greater than expected based on an argument on the van der Waals force of attraction. So there must be another intermolecular force at work here. The intermolecular force, then, is what we describe as hydrogen bonding, and it's the strongest type of intermolecular force that we're going to look at today. If we look, then, at water as our example, water has got two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, and surrounding that oxygen atom, we also have a low, two lone pairs of electrons. The oxygen atom is electronegative, 
and so is a delta negative charge, and the hydrogen atoms are comparatively delta positive. If we bring another water molecule close in, this will align itself a bit like our dipole-dipole forces, and we end up with a stronger interaction, which we show by a dashed line, between, importantly, the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom and the delta-positive hydrogen on the oxygen. This hydrogen bond is unique, then, and only occurs between oxygen lone pairs of electrons, which are bonded to hydrogens, and other hydrogen atoms, and also between nitrogen lone pairs, which are bonded to hydrogen and other hydrogen atoms, and also in the case of hydrogen fluoride. We'll look at these other two examples now. Firstly, then, we see the hydrogen bond here occurring in our instance of ammonia. And just observe here that, again, it's between the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen and the hydrogen on a neighbouring ammonia. And our other example here is hydrogen fluoride. Now, we often see these in, as I said, ammonia and hydrogen fluoride, but the other examples in organic chemistry you'll see later on are the alcohols, OH, the amines, the RNH2, and also carboxylic acid. So, just to recap, we have three types of intermolecular forces, which are hydrogen bonding, dipole, dipole, and van der Waals, with Hydrogen bonding being the strongest type of intermolecular force, and that is occurring between things like nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine in hydrogen atoms, alcohols, amines and carboxylic acids. We get dipole-dipole, which is the next strongest, and they occur between things which have a net dipole, and van der Waals interactions, which are the weakest interactions, and the strength of that interaction is the bigger the molecule, the bigger the atom, the stronger the induced dipole, and also the straighter the molecule, the stronger the induced dipole. Okay, and that's all for now. I'll see you next time.